All right. I am very excited to be back. Uh, I went for a checkup with my oncologist a week and a half ago, and they put me in the hospital. So uh, I was in the hospital for a week. So I am so happy to be back out. And uh, I was feeling pretty bad. I did not mind going into the hospital. So basically during the month of October, I ran 101 degree fever every night when I got home. I'd be here at school, take some Tylenol, go home and run 101 degree fever. And that lasted over a month. So they put me in the hospital. And uh, the COVID that I had in August had never gone away. I still had three months later had COVID here. So they gave me a bunch of IV COVID drugs, a bunch of antibiotics, fluids, all kinds of stuff. And uh, I'm finally feeling a lot better. So I am excited to have a little energy and back with you guys. So let's look at what we're doing. So yeah, I had to communicate by email with you guys last week since I was in the hospital and I couldn't really lead class. I was in no shape to do that. But for you guys, keep it up. Okay, if we look at what's due, go to the grade screen. You see, I, Mr. Brock is now behind a couple assignments. Since I was in the hospital, I did not, I did not work on any schoolwork. So I've got to get caught up. I haven't done my module two project. I haven't done the turtle graphics assignment. I will get caught up on my work. But this week uh, is the four loops assignment. Now notice it is due the 20th. The 20th is this coming Sunday. Are we going to check it after this coming Sunday? No, next week is Thanksgiving week. We have no school all week. So I'm not going to look at it until a week later. So you really have two weeks to do this if you're take it. But if I was you, I'd get it done early in the week now and not have to worry about it again for two weeks, right? Because we'll meet again in two weeks uh, for our next assignment. So the sooner you're caught up and done with this one, so... It is due Sunday, but not really. You really got all Thanksgiving break. But don't do a bunch of work on Thanksgiving break. Get it done ahead of time. If you're behind in classes, work your butt off this week. Have everything done by Friday so you can enjoy a nice long Thanksgiving break with no school. Right? Take advantage of these things. Take advantage of these breaks. Make it feel like a break. Right? Then we'll come back for that last hard push to get us to finals for the semester. And uh, we'll be ready to roll on. But we're going to look at the for loops. Uh, last week, you guys went through the turtle graphics. You know, you're supposed to go through and do all the examples in there where it has you run the program, modify the program, guess what it's going to do. You know, if you haven't done that, you need to go back to lesson one. And let's go back to activities there. The turtle graphics lesson. If you haven't gone through all the examples, this is what teaches you to program going through these programming examples, like right here, following the instructions each slide, complete act each activity. If you're not doing these, then you're struggling writing programs. These help you. So it wants you to read the code and try to predict what's gonna happen. Hashtag the turtle module. So that's just a comment, that's not gonna do anything. Import turtle, define your main, that starts your main part of your program. A variable of tom, turtle dot turtle parentheses. Tom forward 50, Tom dot left 90 dot forward 50 main. When you run the program, it opens up turtle graphics, goes a distance of 50, makes a left turn of 90 degrees, and forward 50, right? 50 pixels. That's the that's the measurement it's using. So oh, and they got it wrong. It didn't move forward 90 pixels again, it moved forward 50 pixels. Oh, we found an error in the textbook here. Love it. So then this one, an error occurs. So they want you to try to fix it. So you need to go do all of these things. They have several of these activities in the lessons. Uh, here's step by step. Highlighting it, telling exactly what it's doing. So if you're not going through and doing these, then, you know, here's, here's more activities here. And, you know, slide one of four. So there's four different things they want you doing here. If you're not doing that, you will struggle. You've got to go back and do that when they've already got the program set up for you so you can understand the program. So let's look at this week's. Four loops. This is very useful in programming, used a lot. Uh, basically, uh, to avoid doing repetitive tasks, lather, rinse, repeat, right? 
uh, doing repetitive tasks might seem repetitive, seem repetitive, seem repetitive. That's that's kind of nice play on words. But in reality, they make life easier. Right? You know, bathing in a regular pattern ensures an odor-free self. Hope you all are repetitive with your bathing. You know, pedaling a bicycle over and over propels you forward, right? Ride a bicycle is majorly repetitive. Also, in programming, the ability to repeat lines of code that you're going to use again and again saves time, less work. So we're going to we're going to explain the for loop programming structure, and then we'll look at the the boundaries for that. So let's look at loops. How do you conquer a repetitive task of programming? Simple. You create a loop. So to make a loop, you need two things, something to repeat and something that tells the program when to stop repeating. That's important, too. Not only do you want it to repeat things, you want to tell it how long to do that, when to stop. For example, you understand the code needed to draw a line using turtle graphics, but what about a square? Well, there's two ways to do that right here that they give us. So let's look at these examples. Which one would you rather write? Both of these will produce the exact same thing. If we say import turtle, which opens up that turtle graphics window, define main. So we're saying Leo is our variable name, right? Could enter T equals turtle or anything, but we're called Leo. Turtle dot turtle parentheses, which you know kicks in those turtle graphics. It says uh, Leo forward 100, just go forward 100 pixels. Turn left 90 degrees. Go forward 100 pixels, left 90 degrees. Forward 100 pixels, left 90 degrees. Forward 100 pixels, left 90 degrees. And it will produce this. Doom, 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 right there. Or we could do the exact same output by saying define main Leo equals turtle dot turtle. Now notice the indentation. This one's indented over. This one's on the same as the main because we're going to do a different process inside of that. You have to indent inside the Leo variable. We're saying four. All right, side in range of four. So we're saying repeat this for loop four times. Four times I want you to do what's indented. Again, another indentation right there. I want you to go forward 100 pixels and then turn left 90 degrees four times. And then end your program in main. So if it does that, it does it once. And then the for loop tells it to turn 90 degrees, do it again. It turns 90 degrees, for loop says do it again. Turns 90 degrees, for loop says do it again. So using the for loop is a lot less programming than this. And this is just one little square. There's lots of things you can use for loops in, in programming. So let's look at the next page. Imagine writing several hundred lines of the same code, right? Programming often requires you to repeat code. That is very true. If you write a big, long program, there's lots of sections of it. It's going to be repeated of something you've already written before because you need the computer to do the same type of thing. But to avoid having to copy and paste a million times, we can use loops. Not only can they save time, they can cut down errors because you're writing fewer lines. The more code we write, the more chance that we make an error. Right, so in drawing a square, the programmer used a for loop. To use a for loop, we give Python our action, draw a line, turn left. So rather than write that over and over, we say repeat it. So let's, let's follow the instructions. Here's one of those examples that you need to go through every time you find them. There's six slides in this one. Just read the code, try to predict the output, and then let's run it. So, comments, this is for loops. Import the turtle, so we're importing the turtle graphics. Define our main sequence here. We've got a variable called Tilly, turtle dot turtle, parentheses. Tilly dot color, deep pink. Okay, so we're assigning a color to our variable here. Now, this is print side zero. That's in quotes. So it's literally going to print side zero as an output of our program because it's in quotes. It's a literal string. It's a string literal side zero. Then it's going to use our Tilly deep pink and go forward 100 pixels. It's going to make 100 pixels a deep pink line and then going to turn left. Then it's going to print side one. Going to go forward 100, turn left. Then it's going to print side two, and go forward 100 and turn left, and print side three, forward, turn left, and that's the end of a program. 
So let's run the program and see if it does what we expect. Side one, side two, side three. See, so it did side zero and it printed that. And then it said side one and it printed that. And it, then it said side two and printed that. And then it said side three and printed that. And watch it. You can see it in order. It prints the side and then draws the side. See, it does it in the order we did it. Print side two and then draw side two. Print side zero, one, two, three, and then draw side. All right. Now, if we go forward, slide two, read the code and try to predict the output. Okay, starts out the same, import our turtle, define our main, Tilly's turtle.turtle, deep pink, but we're using a for loop. Four side in range of four. So repeating our for loop four times. Print side with a space and concatenate string of whatever side equals. Now see, side is what the for loop is counting. When it starts counting, it counts as zero. So it goes, okay, four, zero. And it'll so. This is saying, so print side and tell me what side you're on. I'm on side zero first. So it prints 100 pixels and then turns left. And then the loop will come back. And now side will be equal to one because it's completed the first one. Remember, it all, Python always starts counting at zero. Now it'll do one. And it'll do that print side. And this will be equal to one now. So it'll show side one. It will do 100 pixels, turn left. Then it will loop back here. Side will now be equal to two because it's completed the one loop. And that will do the same thing. And then side will be equal to three and it'll print side three. It'll do that. And then it comes up there and says, oh, I'm supposed to stop at four. So it will not repeat the loop again because we've hit the range. We've hit the top end of the range. So it'll do it zero, one, two, three, and then it'll stop. And it'll, it'll continue on and hit the end of the program right below that. So let's run that and look at that. Side zero, side one, side two, side three. Much shorter, produces the exact same output, does exactly the same thing we wanted to do. We just didn't have to write this four times. We just used a for loop to save time. Zero, one, two, three. So now side equals four, it no longer does the loop. All right, let's look at this next one. So let's look over the code and select run program. Everything's working. Okay. Main Tilly. Royal blue this time. Side is our variable. This is counting with. Prints which side it's on. 100. So everything's pretty much the same. We're just making it royal blue. So let's run that. There we go. Royal blue. So errors happen in coding, it says. Purposely making errors to become familiar with the error messages and make you a stronger programmer. So let's explore some common errors with for loops. Try deleting keywords and symbols like in, range, or for. Let's say we forgot to put in. We just said for side range four. Up, oh, parse error, bad input on line 10. It says there's something wrong on line 10. Oh, we got to put that in, in range. Now it runs again. What if we forgot to put the four? We just put in range. Range takes at least one argument. There's zero given. It means there's got to be some number in there, and it doesn't find any numbers. We put three in there. We won't have a full square. We'll have three sides of it. Might put our four in there to get back to our square. Uh, let's see. Try removing the indentation indentation for the four block. What if we move it back here? Yep, Tilly's not defined on line 12. Because here it goes to use Tilly, but this indentation being back there, reset that. Well, now it's starting a new sequence. It did this. Now, this is a new segment of the program because we indented that, and it doesn't recognize anything above that. Do that now. What if we take the indentation back here and print? Just wondering. Well, oh, bad input on line 11. Half the indentation is important. All right, fix each error before we try another. Next, let's look at what else. Slide four. 
Well, let's change the value. So let's run the program. Okay, this time we're doing orange. And, and we assign the variables first. We said side is 75, angle is 90. So the four count, so it's using count. Michelangelo was our, our variable that we used up here. Michelangelo's turtle, dot turtle. You know, one of the four Ninja Turtles. And it says go forward, whatever side equals to. We're using variables. Instead of telling it a number here, we assign the number to a variable and do that. And you can do that because you could change the variable before it does it again if you want to. So this is going to go forward 75 and then turn 90 degrees. Now, we didn't tell it to print anything. That's why there's nothing over in the output. We didn't say print side or anything we just said draw it all right so let's change the value for the angle from 90 to 95 so let's okay so now we're going to make a 95 degree angle instead of a 90 degree angle and this will look a little different 95 degrees each time now here's where it gets kind of fun modify the for loop to repeat 40 times instead of four now we're going to get into some artistic stuff right because we do this 40 times. You'll see the patterns evolving there. When you're starting to draw some interesting shapes where you can really have some fun with it. And you can move that loop as many times as you want to to keep getting more intricate and more intricate with your variable there. See, now you've got this really cool looking circle in the middle with all these graphics around the outside of the circle, like a lace pattern out here. And you could do that. You could you could keep that going. You go that 100. You could change this angle. Let's say it's change this to 100. See what that looks like. Play with these things. Even though it doesn't say we have to, we could, we could play with other numbers. So there's a 100 degrees repeated 100 times. Oh, look at it. With 100 degrees, it gets to where it repeats itself. And now it's not drawing any new lines. It's drawing old lines, drawing new lines over the old lines. We change it to a 99. Change it to a 99. It will not do that because the math doesn't work out to repeat. See, now it's just a little bit off. So this is your opportunity to play with the programs. They've already got a program written for you. They give you some parameters over here to play with to see what happens when we change this. Now it looks like we might be repeating. No, well, no, it's off just a little bit. It's a little, those lines are a little thicker than the ones next to them. Might be. All right, let's look at the next slide. Read the code, try to predict the output, run it. Look at the output. All right. Import turtle, define main, Leo, Leonardo, that's one of our other Ninja Turtles, turtle dot turtle, uh, blue, and speed. We're assigning a speed to it this time. We're going 10 pixels for sides, 90 degrees, and we're doing 60 repetitions from zero to 59, 60. So Lee forward side plus count times two. So the side is going to be a length of 10 plus whatever the current count is times two. So the sides are not all going to be the same length because it's going to start out with a count of zero. So the first side is going to be zero times two plus the side. It's just going to be 10. But when it loops back around and now count equals one, side plus one times two, which is two. So it's, the next side is going to be 12 long. And the next side will be 14 long. The next side will be 16 long. And each time it's going to be a 90 degree angle. So let's see what happens as it gets bigger and bigger. Look at there. Each side's two longer than the previous. Hmm. See, it's just using, a, using the count to determine the length times two, make it just a little bit longer. What if we just said, the count don't make it times two just add the count to it could be the same thing right but tighter yeah see it's just tighter we took out some of the extra space in there count times three 
And I didn't space it on purpose to see if that works because they had it spaced out. Uh, it works without the spaces. You don't have to do count space times. You see, if it's more space in it, it makes it a larger figure. We're still repeating it the same amount of times. So I say play with these things so you know what they what they affect. What do they affect? Right? We can say, okay, we want this to be red instead. Do the same thing in red. These practice programs in the lesson are where you really learn about the program. You really start to understand the program because you can change things. And if you mess up so bad it doesn't work, you can always go out of it and come back to it. And it resets everything. Let's look at number six. Okay, create a turtle and move it in a pattern or shape of your choosing, maybe an octagon or star. Make any changes you like to the existing code for the previous slides as needed. So it says they're going to have their main tie equals turtle dot turtle. It could be a forest green is what we assign in tie at a speed of 10. Oh, we didn't play with that. I'm going to go back here for just a minute. I want to go back to here. Is it still got a red? Still got our count times three. All right. Let's put the speed at 100. I just, we didn't play with that. Look how fast that goes. At 1,000. Can't tell the big difference between 100 and 1,000 right there. But yeah, play with those things too. All right. So speed of 10. The size is going to be a length of 10 pixels. Angle of 90 degrees. They're going to count 10 times. They're going to do this loop. Let's go forward the length of the side and then left the angle main. So it's going to go repeating over itself because we didn't change anything. After you got four 90 degree angles, you're drawing back on top of yourself. Let's make this bigger. See, it's just drawing on top of itself. It could keep going, but it's not going to make any new lines. So you can change the color, the speed, the distance, the angle. By adding the for loop, you can make your turtle repeat a set of steps over and over again in generation. So there you go. There's something to play with. Let's see what page four talks about. For loops and counting. One of the best things about a for loop is that it gives you control over where the repetition stops and starts. Look at that pattern they're drawing. In other words, it will stop when you tell it to, but you do have to tell it when to stop. When coding a for loop to make a simple square, we gave the turtle a range to repeat his movement four times. For the variable side in range of four. Do it four times. It can be more specific. By passing three values to the range, you can tell it where to start. Start at number nine, go to number 20, and count by threes. We can, we can change that. It doesn't just have to be this number. We can tell it where to start, where to end, and count by threes. So when the loop begins, the counter variable n is assigned a starting value of nine. And after each iteration of the loop, it goes up by three. So it'll be nine, then it'll be 12, it'll be 15, it'll be 18. And then it'll stop because the next one would be over 20. So it would do four iterations, nine, 12, 15, and 18. All right, good stuff in here. So as you've seen, programming large amount of codes often involves using repetitive statements that would take a long time to write. For work for these handy for loops, for loops are used in a lot of programming languages, not just Python, because they're very useful, because all programming requires a lot of repetition. Not just drawing either, basic calculations of math, more complex systems, all kinds of stuff. So let's see what we have here. If I main print, I can count. So it's literally going to print that on the screen. For n, n is our variable. So start at zero, count to 10 by ones. All right. That's really extra information. We could just put range of 10 and it would automatically start at zero and count by ones. That's the default. But they're defining it just to make it clear. Print whatever the value of n is as a string, right? You've got to tell it's a string. Print whatever loop we're on and Mississippi and end the program. So when we run it, I can count zero Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. 
So if we want to count to 10 Mississippi, one, one to 10, we can tell it to start at one, stop when it gets to 11. Now it goes one Mississippi all the way to 10 Mississippi. Nice little counter in there. So there's six slides there. I'm going to let you go through the rest of those. I'm not going to go through them all. I want to get to our assignment here because here is our assignment template and the rubric on how it's graded. Here's your assignment for the week. Three parts. You're going to write a program to draw a repetitive pattern or an outline of a shape. You know, we, we made several shapes today just looking at the samples using turtle graphics and for loops. Use the for loops. Here's the guidelines. Decide on a pattern or a shape. You, you could draw a house. You know, you could have, draw a house. You can get leave your uh, box at the top, then make a 45-degree angle and turn 9 degrees, make another 45-degree angle, come back down and make a roof. You know, you can do whatever you want to do it. Get creative. Have some fun with it. Give your artwork a name and print the name to the output. My house. Print parentheses, quotes, my house, unquote, parentheses, right? That would be on the output side, and then the turtle graphics would draw your house. Use four loops in turtle mode, draw an outline of a shape or repetitive pattern. You want to make some kind of fancy flower-looking thing, whatever you want to do. Use at least one for loop and at least three repetitions. You'll probably use more than three, but at least three. Use the for loop once at least with at least three loops. Use a color. Besides black, you can change colors multiple times if you want to. So write the pseudocode. You got to have your insert your pseudocode right here. Copy and paste your pseudocode. Remember, you want to you want to copy and paste this whole thing. Copy and paste this whole thing into a Google Doc. All right, you can right click and copy it. Paste this into a blank Google Doc and and use that to turn it in. You got to paste your pseudocode right there. Part two, code the program using Python idle. So use your comments at the beginning. We always put our name and date and just a description of what program this is that you're writing. Use your Python conventions in guarding indentations and use of white space to make it easier to read, which is why they put the space times space two when they did it, just spaces out, make it easier to read than putting it all together, no spaces. Python didn't care which way we did it. Use meaningful variable names. House dot turtle dot turtle, right? So then your output should look like this. You do not have to copy and paste your output in here unless you want to. It's optional, right? Example of expected output. Oh, they messed this up. This says insert your pseudocode here. They already put our pseudocode up here. This is where you copy and paste your actual code. Oh, we found two mess ups this lesson. Two. Your actual code goes here. And then, of course, your post-mortem review questions, right? So this person drew a house. They did one, two, three, four, did the roof. Well, it looks like they did the other direction, though. They, they went up this way and over here and turned. Uh, this person did one of these wild-looking things over here. That's pretty cool looking. So there you go. Have some fun with this. Get creative. Some of you, some of you folks really like the whole art. We're getting into virtual art here, right? Computer programming, uh, computer art, all of that good stuff. So that's what we have this week using those turtle graphics that was in lesson one last week that you just had the multiple choice assignment. I told you when we had the multiple choice assignment, pay attention, go through those examples because we're going to be using it this week. And we are with adding in some for loops, which is very useful. Because you know, if you want to do one of them real fancy patterns with a hundred times, you don't want to write it a hundred times. You want to use a for loop. Do this a hundred times. Do this 381 times. However you want to do that. But uh, that's what we have this week. Have some fun with it. Get it done early in the week. It's Thanksgiving next week. We're not going to be having class. You're not going to have a new assignment next week. So get it done early this week and enjoy your break. Enjoy some turkey, some ham, whatever you're having. Uh, you know, garlic crusted prime rib. I don't know what you eat. Maybe you eat manwich, you know, whatever it is. Spend some time with some friends. Spend some time with some family. Make the most of the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, make it a special time. So get this stuff out of the way because you don't want to sit there eating turkey going, mm, I got to hurry up and get this 
turkey down because I got to write my four loops assignment. No, no, no. Do not do that. Get it done early. All right. Happy to be back. Love you guys. Uh, we will see you next time. If you need to be here Wednesday, I'll be here. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.